from things far away. So it's just us today. You'll have to bear with us. Um, we're going to continue with this wall art painting project. It has been how many sessions? This is session nine. start a little bit of, of our paint work. Um, we did some field art bits. We got some white on the bottom. We did some flesh tones on the underside. I'm going to show you how to build some depth in those um, by painting heavily and spraying them into the little contours and then uh, doing just a little bit of angle spraying to define some of these areas. So today we're going to continue on building a base, uh, building our base layer. Um, and if you, if you think about painting your fish in layers, um, I think it will help you build a much more realistic representation by adding depth. And, and that's what we really want to concentrate on is uh, we talked about it when we built with our epoxies. We, we layered our epoxies on top of each other. still need to continue making sure that we have a solid base color down. And so we painted our white, we, painted, we blended some of our epoxy work, um, but we do have a couple little fixes so we have an opportunity to show you how to fix. Um, and I'm gonna start with that. Uh, Tara um, Huebner had a few weeks ago told us about putting little pieces of old fins into our splits. Um, patching them in there and that works great. That's an excellent, excellent option if you have those dried pieces of fin that you can that you can cut and paste into splits. Works great. Um, if you don't happen to have those, there are ways to recreate this so it doesn't just look like a dark spot. And that's oftentimes what you'll see is that taxidermists not having a better answer to to painting this will just darken it in and you'll see dark void. Um, we're going to take that one step further today. We have silk sand that has repaired that spot, but I have trouble painting on a clear surface. If you have some sanding tape that you want to show them um, a little bit closer. So I'm going to turn toward you, this fish, and uh, kind of give you a little bit of a spot Notice how that clear area shows everything behind it and is really affected color-wise by whatever, whatever color is behind it. Here we have a real gray. Um, by adding a dark, we can go light. Um, but if we look at the fish itself, the, the area that we're trying to recreate, we have light colored fin rays. And then we have these dark markings and we have kind of a medium tone. So what I see here is the absence of these fin rays. So the first thing I want to do is create the light. And I'm going to do that by adding just a little bit of an off-white color to the back of these of these fins, the back side. And the reason I want this to be on the back side is because I'm going to let my color be on the front side. Um, and you'll see in just a minute.
I'm sure someone out there will let us know. Um, another thing that I think is um, you, can, you can add just a little bit of this color to the surrounding areas, not just in the split areas, and that'll help blend it in as well. So that you're not not doing just splits. Um, or just the repairs. I keep saying splits, what you call them repairs. That will help blend in that, that fix it. So um, now we have a little bit of a better start on on our repairs and I would make sure that we do this with every every repair the better you fix it now the less we're going to have to worry about later when we bring it back to um, when we when we go to putting our base color so there's one repair and now i'm going to move over to our other fish and show you just a little bit more about building that base have 
have some, some little rules. And with a walleye, we want to keep them up nice and high. Um, we don't want them to be too far down on the fish. We don't want them to be um, overly elongated that he'll start to look like a perch. Um, but I am going to bring just some of these up here on the back using reference. Um, and this, uh, the nice part about this Pretex paint is we can dab it on like so. We're putting it on pretty heavy. If, if it appears a little too heavy, we can come back and touch it with a towel and just pick it up so that it's still sitting down in the loaf in the scale pocket, but it's not completely obliterating all of the, the detail of the scales. And we'll just go down the side doing that. This works great on your largemouth bass. This will work great on a smallmouth bass. Um, any fish with, with heavy markings, another good one is where you have to make them up, this works well, but another nice application for them is perch. Um, a lot of times you'll see a skin mount perch, well, yellow perch, will carry his markings, they'll show through, um, but you just want to accent them a little bit, and most of the time people come back with an airbrush, accent their perch bars, and all of a sudden he looks like he's in jail with jailbird stripes. Um, so putting them on with a brush early um, underneath is going to enhance those markings that dried in it and uh, give you something a little bit more of a guideline. So it's real easy to go through. Um, again, if I was doing uh, some of these other species, a largemouth or a, or a smallmouth, there might be some pattern that you need to follow. And when we do that, I like to start small. Um, and kind of map out where these markings are going to be if they were long vertical markings on, say, a bluegill or a largemouth bass or a smallmouth bass. Um, there are very specific places that those markings need to be. Um, size and spacing are all considerations, too. And so it's nice to start small. And you can say on a bluegill, there's typically, oh, or a smallmouth, there's 10 or 11 bars depending upon the fish um, along the side. So it's, it's nice to map those out, get them started, and then you can come back and build upon them. But we'll just go in here and our Createx is, is uh, working really well with our um, 6000, 6001 transparent sealer. Um, it's not beating up, it's biting into that sealer really nice. And you can see now I have just a really good basic pattern that I can build on later. Now if we left this fish like that, he would look um, just super splotchy and Tom would tell me I have to paint him again. Um, but we're going to do a few things over top of this to set it back. Tone him down, set it back. I'm going to put in some of these little minor uh, markings in between. Like so. Just to help create that, that camouflage pattern. That's a pattern that's that these walleyes, any of you guys that are ice fishing clear water and uh, happen to be on the sand looking down at walleyes, you can see this pattern really well and they just absolutely blend in. Um, to their surroundings. So we'll do something like that. Let, that. let that set up. Now you can accelerate any of these with any of these water-based applications. You can accelerate that with a hair dryer, um, which I might do real quick for you because I'm going to get back and paint right over top of it. Um, I'm going to hit this with the hair dryer just to set it. And then we're going to move on to another application. Do we get all of our audio working? Yes, I'm thinking Good. the issue actually had to do with this not being in enough, so it was cutting in and out. Perfect. But I'm thinking everything is good to go now. Good. Um, and if not, please tune in and let us know. 
Okay, let us know. There we go. I've just got this on a low setting. Don't don't use too much heat. Um, and I can, it's dry to the touch. That's really all I'm looking for. Um, I did add a little bit of alcohol to that, um, which I think is helping this dry a little faster. Um, if you wanted to get very detailed, you sure could bring some of those markings, and I'll, I'll show you quick, um, up into the top of the head. A walleye has, and a perch, um, both have, although the top of their head is very dark, um, they have some markings up there on the top too that, that kind of blend front to back, and we'll do a few of those too just to kind of show you how that would show in here. Do as much of this or as little as you think your customer's gonna pay for. But it, it is another step that will help blend that epoxy repair and make that go away a little bit better. Oops, I got a little bit more paint on my brush than I wanted. I'm just gonna dab that. Sorry, Kate, I think I moved it on you. Trying to give you a better angle. So really look at your reference material um, while you're doing this and make sure to, to follow that. I'm just trying to break up that, that smooth epoxy look on the top of the head. If you've got any um, epoxy repair Back here at the gill cover, this is a nice little blend that will help you. Okay, bring a little bit up here above the eye and call that good. We could bring this all the way down the nose and continue it, but I just wanted to give you a little taste of what it is. We'll probably finish this up off camera so that we can move on and get into some of our other, our other materials, paint mediums. But don't stop, pick your re don't stop blending your repairs until you get them all. Um, I can't stress that enough. Um, it will just help you further down the road. So, all right. Um, I think I'm gonna move Kate to another section of the fish we're going to come back to those the top of the back we'll come back to that reference picture again the top of our back if we look at those markings and all of this area through here you can see a very small little accent on the back of each scale and this is what I would call um, these are the reflective this will be the reflective portion, uh, and we're gonna start building that reflective base. And, and a lot of people refer to this as scale tipping. Um, we're gonna do that now, so that the scale tipping doesn't appear to be sitting on the very top, but we have a reflective value that will contrast these flat values underneath. So I'm gonna start that, and to do that, I'm going to work with, there's any number of materials out there, um, paints, uh, acrylic, lacquer, whatever you're comfortable with, but I'm going to do that with liquid scales. I'm going to do it with a water brush, and I'm going to use a fancy dandy little color reservoir to help speed this process along. So um, I'm just going to take liquid scales. And this is burnished gold. I'm gonna take it straight out of the container. And I'm going to practice just a little bit on the back side of the fish. And make sure that I've got good consistency, nice and bright. 
but not overbearing, overpowering. Um, I like what I've got going. So I think I'll bring it around that you guys can see. Um, right here by the dorsal fin. And we'll go through and do quite a few of these, but I'm certainly not going to get them all done on camera. You guys don't want to watch me do that. But um, this size and shape is very important. Um, they're not just little crescents. They do have a little more... Uh, a little more point to the top and bottom. They're thicker in the middle. Look at your reference material and uh, refer to reference anytime there's a question that you're doing a new, your new, a new technique. There we go. My water brush is, is, uh, Working well, I've got a little bit more water in the tip than I want, so I'm just gonna dry that off. There you go, now you can see that a little bit better. And you'll develop a technique to this. I, I find that if I touch very light and then push toward the middle, I can widen that out. And create that shape that I'm looking for. You'll find that scale tipping is, I enjoy doing it, but I have to be, I have to be in the right mood for it. Um, you can move through it pretty fast. Um, you'll start the size and shape of the scale sometimes works really well. Sometimes you have to come back and give it two, um, two touches, sometimes just one, but depending upon how hard you push on the brushes, on the bristles, you can manipulate the, the thickness and shape of your, tip, your tipping, your tipped area. Goodness, I haven't looked up at what I was doing. Am I okay? Yes. I turned toward yeah. them. Don't look at your scale tipping under too much magnification. It'll scare you. Um, but I would, I actually would recommend that you use a magnifying visor for this. It helps a lot. And I'm just going to take this pattern through the entire fish. Um, this will take me 30, 40 minutes on a on a walleye to do the upper shoulder portion. Um, and there are some fish that it'll take you 30 or 40 hours, but again, we're also concerned with time. We'll just continue that all the way down. Um, I don't know if they can see. You might back out, Kate, so they can see the difference in the areas that are done and the areas that weren't done yet, that haven't been done yet. Now you can tell that these dark patches, the markings that we made earlier, are blending in just a little bit more um, with the gold on top of them. I do know that if you're going to do any scale tipping that I really would recommend if you're going to do it, do them all. Don't skip around because then it'll look like he has measles. Um, make sure and get all of the scales. Um, you, can, you can fade this, this technique out. Um, typically, we'll fade out somewhere around the lateral line um, or at least go to a different value. I would bring this down the whole side of the fish. The nice thing about using this water brush is um, the bristles are staying wet and I can get 
10 to 15 scales tipped. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, that's probably good. Um, 11, 12, um, before having to reapply paint to the brush, um, where with a traditional brush, you're just not gonna get that many. It tends to dry, the paint doesn't flow as well, it doesn't go on quite as smooth. And that is scale tipping with liquid scales. Um, I think I'm going to move on. Um, before I leave liquid scales though completely, I will mention um, sometimes they're not the exact color that you're looking for, for one reason or another. They may not um, be giving you the effect that you're after. Um, you can alter liquid scales with Perlex powders. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to brighten up my gold, a really nice trick to that is to take, hope I don't spill this, the Perlex powder in gold and add some of that gold material to my liquid scales. They're very, very compatible. And you can adjust the intensity of your, of your liquid scales just by adding a little bit of these fine iridescent mica powders. Um, I like to do that with when we do the belly scales or do white or do uh, like a chrome salmon um, or trout that's very fresh and requires a really bright silver and I use that kind of in quotes, silver, because I think silver is actually pretty gray, um, traditional silver colors. So we'll add, in that case, a lot of times white pearl, um, white pearl in the liquids, in the uh, Pearlex to our liquid scales to get a more intense um, silvery chrome color. Um, that works really well. So don't be afraid to mix your mediums and, uh, and get the exact tipping color and consistency you're looking for. What you don't want is for this to look real blotchy and added on um, at the end. A lot of times you'll see that um, it was uh, the last 30 minutes of the paint process, somebody will come through and blotch everything on with a brush and it sits on top and looks not as real. So anyway, that's what I would do with the liquid scales and building that metallic base. I would not be afraid to go on down the bottom side of the fish, the lower area with a pearl color. So all the way down here I would come in with my white pearls. And actually, if you look at your walleye, that white pearl will transition up into the body nicely somewhere right up in here. Um, you might back out just a little bit. There we go. Um, so you can see white all the way up in here. You can see some of that white pearl. So that's where I would start to transition some of that. And we'll do most of that off camera, but um, I can show you just a little bit of the white pearl as well. And then we're gonna move into another material. Um, that was burnished gold that I had there. Um, I promised you I would go to the white pearl. Another one of my favorites is the pale gold which I would do pale gold from this area down to about here. So this body section, I would transition into pale gold and then we'll do some of the white pearl. Um, but rather than showing you all three, I'm gonna go to the white pearl. And for this one, I am going to add just a little bit of the Pearl X powder. So I've got a cup full of liquid scales. I want this to be a little brighter. 
So I'm going to add just a little bit of Pearl-X powder in the, in the white pearl to my color cup here. I'm just going to intensify the, the pearl values. Really want those to pop. I like that pearly belly as opposed to a flat white belly. All right, come back to my water brush, which I just cleaned out with a little water. And I'm going to come down in this lower area. I'll lift him up a little, Kate, so you can see. There we go. And I'll come to a easier to work area. Tough to show on, on camera, but there really is a nice pearly value to this. And it definitely takes away the dead, the dead skin tone. Another thing it does nicely is break up that white where we brought the white airbrush color up. Um, it helps break up some of that white as well. Oh, that's showing up very bright. That actually we've got the light hitting that really well and it's, it's not quite as intense as you see on the camera there. Um, And we would continue with that um, all the way through the belly portion of the fish, the lower third. And I'll blend it up here. Remember, I mentioned we'll use some, some pale gold. And so I'll bring the pale gold over this pearl just to help blend that transition. If you were doing a reproduction, I would do exactly the same thing. Every one of these scales gets treated more than once. Do we have any questions? Not a whole lot. We do have Jeff who is wondering about a catalog that he requested. And we currently are out of our 2021 catalog right now. And so basically what we're doing is we are sending, going to send you to our online catalog. And it is going to be the exact same as our physical copy. Uh, the only difference is that this one will be shoppable. Um, so if you go to our website at www.matiscatracksjourney.com, you will be able to view our 21 catalog and you will be on our list to get our 2022 catalog once that comes out. Perfect. Um, that flip book is really handy. I find myself using it quite often. Um, very easy to, to work through to navigate and works well. Okay, so that's really what we would do with the, with the pearl side. And you can see there's a transition between where the pearls are and the, the gold that we did initially. And that I would fill with the pale gold um, in the exact same manner. All right, so now we're gonna move on. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to put just a little bit of the loose powders on our fish to continue building the reflective base. You could do this with a, you could do this with an airbrush and iridescent colors if you wanted to. Um, but I really like the intensity of the Perlex powder when looking at some of these, especially the cheek of a walleye, just super reflective down here. You can see some of these reflective transitions um, on, the, on the surface, but they're underneath the dark markings. So I'm gonna put some of those in and um, I'm gonna do it with just a Q-tip and I'm gonna do first the white pearl And I'm just going to put it on loose. Remember, this is going to be underneath the markings. So we're going to have to come back over top of any of this that, any of the markings that are compromised, we're going to come back over top. But I'm just trying to build that reflective pearly base. These hard bony plates to make sure that we get those. And we're back in here, up in here. And you can see I'm I'm being pretty random with their location. Be careful with Q-tips that it's not picking up lint. Um, a micro applicator works really well too for this. And those are microfiber, and they don't have the little lint particles. I wanted the uh, Q-tip just for larger application. Pan pastels incidentally have a soft tip, um, kind of a little makeup brush that works well for this too. Okay, but that's really all I'm gonna do with the pearl. Um, one of my very favorite colors that was not available for a lot of years um, and is now back. We have some, and we've got is green gold. Um, these are duo colors in the Pearl X and the Pearl X green gold um, will, the, if you don't know anything about the, the duo colors, basically if you were to consider the, these being built with, by pouring out a layer of color and then grinding it up, um, the way the duo colors could be considered is one side of the sparkle is green and one side is gold. So it's gonna pick up from different angles. Um, it's gonna pick up different intensities of the green or just different intensities of gold. And I, I like that effect um, on these fish as, as you move around them, it gives them a lot of dimension. So I'm gonna bring that through this green gold up here under the eye. And we'll come back and accent this again later on, but I'm gonna get some underneath like that. Anywhere that you want to see that green gold. Um, and a great product to lock down your color is the workable fixative. Lock down any of your powder work. Um, you can use gloss for this as well. Um, glosses work, work great. Um, we have the workable fixative on hand for, for our pan pastel work and have found that it works really good for locking down the Prolex powders too. So um, that's what we're gonna use. And it goes on light, dries fast, dry to the touch already. And I'm not picking up any powder on my fingers. Hey, Tim, how are you? Um, hopefully everything is going well. Where you are is pouring rain here, um, but looks like it might be, be lightening up just in time to go fishing um, tonight. Um, so we've got, some, we've got some reflective powder 
underneath this. We've locked it down. You could go through the body. I don't like to use powders as much through the scaled area um, because the loose powder does tend to um, get in places that it's not supposed to be. So I'm not gonna do any of it there, but I like it in my head work um, and you can develop that as far as you wanna go. Um, the next thing that I'm gonna show you is another great, great, great tip um, for blending markings. And this is gonna be done with pan pastel. A walleye is a really tough one to blend the transition area from where these little body markings start and stop into the belly. Um, if you airbrushed your white, more than likely you lessened the value of this, these markings up, say, right here in front of the uh, pectoral fin. Those little markings start to look hazy. Um, some of these markings down low, depending upon how careful you were with your white, can really start to um, look unnatural and airbrushed, where if we go to a good close-up of our real fish, um, move it up, Kate, there we go. In this lower area, you can see those markings that are low, even down into the white of the belly, are still very intense. Um, where if you look at the skin that we have that we've airbrushed over, um, we've lost a lot of that intensity down here, right through here. These are real soft now. And that continues down the whole length of the body. So um, one of my very favorite applications um, for the Perlex, or for the Pan Pastel, it is on the with these little micro applicators that uh, a former student and friend, Lonnie Schumper, showed me years ago. Um, two different sizes, they're microfiber, no, so they won't leave lint. Um, but these little guys are great applicators for our um, pan pastels. And pan pastels are very, very easily controlled, um, easy controlled pastel uh, materials that are dry. It's a dry powder, but I'm going to use that to recreate this, these markings right up here on the front of the fish. There's no way I'm going to do that without looking. So. Um, you might get my head in some of these pictures, but if you can see that, Kate, I am just going to come back and re-intensify all those little markings underneath that white. I'll try not to work outside of the camera, but... Is my head in the way? Um, right now, but we'll work with it. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, and I would go down the whole side of the fish. You might back out, Kate, because I'm going to move quickly along the belly line and uh, kind of show them how much of this we can we can cover and what a difference it makes. Um, you can see now with being back a little further, you can see how much of a difference that made and in the intensity of those markings. No overspray from your airbrush, easy, easy to control. Um, just make sure you don't have a bunch of spilled powder from it. Make sure you're getting your markings on top of the old ones, or at least if you don't have, if you're doing a reproduction, make sure that they're in the correct location on the scale. And I'm gonna move behind this 
this pe um, pectoral fin and start some of these. Now, I've done this with an airbrush. It works great. Um, you can do that. But I like to, whatever application I'm going to do, I like to get that done now so that as I put my other body colors on later, all of this blends in. And go ahead and come up into the fish so that it blends out. I'm using yellow ochre extra dark, um, one of my favorite colors of the pan pastels for fish work. But um, you might find that raw umber, raw umber shade, um, even raw umber extra dark um, is m more appropriate. Um, just pick a color that's going to match the surrounding skin. And if there's any stray powder before you lock it in, you can blow it off. And you won't disturb that that you put on, that you pushed on with the applicator. <laughs> so sometimes I like to do that at the very end. And now you can see how sharp and vivid those markings are. Um, makes a huge difference, huge, huge difference in that, that belly transition. Now we may have to come back and, and uh, paint a little white. And if we did, I would just come back and go back over those markings as well. Again, if you're doing a reproduction, you're going to have to be making these up. So make sure you have um, really good reference pictures to refer to location, size, shape, and intensity. Okay. And then one more spot I'm going to get, Kate, is right up here on top in the head. And I'm going to bring in some of those markings um, right in that cheek that we just a few minutes ago put the reflective area the reflective colors under. And I'm just going to come back and re-intensify the markings on the side of the face. Right over top of those, of those powders. Anywhere down in here that might have gotten light when we did some of our our initial whites. That's really it. Um, you can continue through the in, entire fish. Um, this maxillary bone has real modeled markings on it. We rebuilt that with epoxy, so now we've got to rebuild all these colors that, that went away when we put the white epoxy sculpt on top of it, or fix it sculpt. Um, I'd continue down the lip line and so forth. We can, we can do this all day, but um, I hope that kind of gives you some. Oh, and by the way, I'm locking down. Now that I've finished those little areas, I'm locking down any of the pan pastel work that I did with the workable fixative just so I don't pick it up and smear it. Um, 
there you go. That's what I would do um, in building a base. I think when we come back uh, next Thursday, if Tom and Mandy decide to come back from wherever warm that they are, um, we might uh, get this guy uh, a lot further along. We'll start adding some body colors. We'll, during the course of the week, um, we'll come back and, and finish up everything that we started through the midsection of the fish and, and we'll get him nice and evened out and then we'll put some body colors on. That'll go fairly quickly. Um, but I uh, hope that answered a few questions on some of these um, alternative methods. I think, Kate, you had something you wanted to share with them? I do. Real quick, though, we did just have a question come, th oh, come perfect. through from Christopher Wordclass, and he's wondering yep. which fixative do you use after cancer cells? Uh, right there. It's actually called workable fixative. It's a Krylon product. Um, it is made for pastels, chalks, graphite, etc. It goes on very, very lightly. Um, the nice thing about it is it dries really fast. Um, anytime you're working with powders, heavy glosses or mats or, or whatever clear you might be using tend to disperse powder um, if they're put on too heavily. They can, if it goes on thick, the powder can actually lift and separate and then all of a sudden the um, people will say, oh my gosh, I sprayed it with a sealer and the, and the powder went away or the reflective property or the intensity of the, the pastel went away, um, what's actually happening is those powders, they're all on a flat surface and, and right next to each other, they look very intense. But when you spray a gloss on top and they literally float up into that gloss, they start to spread out and their intensity goes down drastically. So um, with the workable fixative, it goes on so thin and so light and like I showed you a minute ago, dries so quickly you can continue to work and so we found that that works great. I think um, I think that was from um, uh, one of our students too that turned us on to that. That was from Brent Denniston down in uh, Nebraska um, turned us on to that a couple years ago. It's really been a, a great tool for us. So um, that's what I would do to lock down any of your powder work. Oh, wow. And that is basically going to include all of our closeout discontinued items. So this oh. will be while supplies last, and then everything is up to 50% off. There's a lot of 50 fun percent things. 50% off. Does Tom know about this? He does. It does was he? Tom approved. <laughs> okay. And along with that, we are also going to be doing um, hot summer deals, and that is just going to be some of our that wow. we will be offering at a discounted price. The hot summer deals will go through Monday night, and then the closeout sale is going to just be while our quantities last. Oh, wow. So um, it will be first come, first served. We do have a collection on our website, shop.matuskataxidermy.com, and you will see two circle collections. One says our hot summer sales, and that one will include our closeout sale. And the Got hot it. summer deals is going to include all of our uh, discounted hot summer deals that we are doing. So can you give us an example of each one of those? Yeah, just give us an example. Yeah, what sure. might be something they'd find on the hot summer sale? So the hot summer sale, um, we've got everything from habitat. So an, an item would be we've got our thick flat base. That is going to be 20% off. Oh, I believe nice. we only have a few quantities left of that. So okay. for example, let's say we have five um, available. As soon as those five are gone, that will be it. We will no longer carry that item. Got it. So Oh, so these are closeouts. Yes, these so discontinues these closeouts. Got it. Okay. And then we also are throwing in um, at on addition, um, we're gonna do um, some deals where we some of our hot products that go okay. over very well with our customers will be discounted. Um, we have created a flip book of everything that is in our sale. Oh, wow. And the flip book includes both the closeout sale and the hot summer deals. Um, that will be made available to you very 
shortly and that is going to be shoppable. So make sure to take advantage of that. Um, a lot of awesome deals. I think we have wow. I don't know, somewhere close around 100 different products. I saw it today and it's, there's a lot. Um, one, of the, one of the items on the summer deals was foam, wasn't it? I think yeah, that's going to be a thing. Yeah, urethane foam that was hard to get um, not too long ago will be on sale until Monday. Yes. Is that right? Monday until Monday. Night. Yep. So, so check it out. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. Yeah, definitely take advantage. Very cool. Um, what else do we have business wise? So we do have a giveaway today. Oh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. We, th we think long and hard about these giveaways most of the time. Um, sometimes they're they are always a product of um, what we're working on. And, and when we came to it today, we said, what are we going to give away? And um, Tom and Mandy aren't here to say no. So we're on our own. Um, I think what we're going to do is do a water brush. We're going to do a liquid scales of your choice. And I thought I had one more thing. Didn't I have one more? Scale tipping. Yes, that's right. And the scale tipping cup. Um, one of the colors that I really like is pale gold. I'd highly recommend it. It's, it's a great one if you order on, so they're gonna have this on their next order, is that correct? That's correct. So yes. if you specify what color liquid scales you want on your next order, I think they will let you go with whichever one you want. But pale gold or um, white pearl, probably my very favorites. It's gonna be the smaller one, this, this here. I don't think we carry the big ones anymore. Um, but it will be this guy right here. Awesome. So that's our giveaway. Who's that go to? That goes to Brad Cutler. Wow. So congratulations, Congrats, Brad. Brad. Hope that comes in very handy. Um, and uh, like I say, next week, hopefully, we'll even out all of this blotchy stuff, and we'll cross our fingers and hope Tom and Mandy decide to come back from their vacation, and uh, we'll get further along on this walleye and maybe... We're on nine now, hopefully wrap it up before we get to 17. <laughs> we will see you next week. All right. Hopefully no sound issues. 